Okay, haircutters, here we go. Back at the Bolsa Chica Barber Shop, we're gonna do a nice high and tight, zeroed out razor taper, flat top. This is my guy, Jason. Right now we're talking about what exactly he's looking for. Once again, this is another real haircut in my barber shop during working hours. Right now, I'm saturating him really good with the Layrite Grooming Spray. Basically, priming the hair, getting it nice and flexible, nice and loose, waking it up, getting everything to stand up and to unify and to come together. Obviously, this is a grown-out flat top from his previous haircut. I've been cutting his hair for several years. Okay, we've got him uh, nice and saturated with the Layrite Grooming Spray. Lots of combing. Let that uh, grooming spray soak in. Let it do its job, let it soak in and get everything nice and flexible. Lots of combing. Here we go, right into the drying. On this video, I've cut out all of the back and forth to the workstation, and it's still over a 40 minute video. This is a step by step all the way through. You're gonna see everything except for me walking to the workstation. So I'm drying off that grooming spray to get that nice tack and nice candy coat onto each and every hair, making it nice and crisp when it cuts, getting everything to, like I said, unify and stand up. Lots of blow drying all the way thoroughly, nice and dry. There we go. Now, he's been saturated, he's been dried, lots of combing. We've had a nice consultation about what he's looking for. We discuss how high he wants to go, how tight he wants to go, how low he wants the flat top, all of these little tiny details create his full custom haircut. So right there, clipper over comb, right in that upper middle and middle middle section like we've talked about before. The clipper over comb, I'm using the Wall 5 Star Senior Cordless all the way closed so I can get the most out of that clipper over comb action. See how I dip the teeth of the comb and then scoop them up? Dip the comb, scoop them up. It just dig in, stand up the hair, and swipe. Strike and swipe. There we go. We're cleaning off that profile. I've got a nice vertical approach on the comb. There's a horizontal approach and a vertical approach. Right now I'm full vertical. Just taking off that bulk and shaping. Uh, when I look at the uh, front view to catch the profile, like right there, I'm looking at that angle that we're creating and just building it nice and sharp, nice and crisp, right off of the upper side of the parietal ridge. Lots of striking, lots of swiping, basically watching the taper develop as we go, removing that bulk and shaping that flat top. Basically that angle that I'm holding right there is the key. Keep that angle nice and consistent, See how I dip the teeth of the comb and kind of create a little bit of a scooping action with the comb. Dig in, stand up, and strike and swipe. Strike with the comb, dig in, stand up, swipe with the clipper. Here we go. We're on the other side. The cool thing about this video is we're going to show you both sides. So you'll see it once and then you'll see it twice on the second side because actually both sides are very different. Obviously you approach the left side from the front and we're approaching the right side from the back. Um, they are two different, they're not the same. So you just need to kind of get comfortable working around the head and keeping that angle that we're shooting for nice and consistent like we said. There we go, lots of striking, lots of swiping. You can see that cone shape, it's closing off at the top keeping all that stuff at the top. Right now we're just removing that bulk, getting that middle, middle, and upper middle section nice and cleared. Here we go, opened all the way up, starting right there in that middle, middle section, and very, very lightly, just scooping. Honestly, I'm not pushing into it much at all, especially right here. I like to preserve as many of my options as possible. So, nice and light, and then as you go, you kind of push in more and more. These first couple of strikes, you really want to just come off of the head nice and easy. It's really handcrafted. You're really scooping up and into that clip rover comb work that you just did. 
using your eye to make a nice soft transition down to a very high zero. We're all the way open, so it's about a one. The uh, wall five star really cuts very close. There's no room for error. It removes hair very quickly and very cleanly. Okay, I've closed down on the lever about a third. I like to break everything into thirds. About a third I've closed it and I'm working in smaller little bands working towards that dark line that we're creating underneath. That dark line, I refer to it as a reverse guide. It's how we keep our position. It's how we take quick references as to our symmetri symmetry that we're looking for in the haircut. There we go. So we're closing it down. We're really tightening it up. Just chipping in, chipping out, getting that true zero in these razor tapers. The true zero is what we're going for. And you'll see there'll be some up and down work. See how it's a bit of a bit of a band. We're gonna pull the debris out with a nice coarse brush. I use the hair block. It's a very cool tool. There we go. So now the bulk's gone, and now we're going to kind of dial it in. Okay, lots of combing. I've even brought in the Andis soft brush to help me clear the debris. He was actually a little perspiration, so the hair kind of really stuck. So get that stuff out of there. There we go. Right at that front point, we got our trimmer, and we're upside down, really getting the most out of the cutting head. And taking our time. There we go. More combing. Got our little taper comb. Really trying to get that zero. You have to be patient and let that zero develop so the razor work is nice and easy. Everything kind of overlaps and everything kind of transitions and preps for the next step. Okay, I'm back with my wall five star cordless adjustable. And right now, we're in a buffing mode. The bulk has been removed. The basic shape is there. And now we're looking for refinement all the way down to that zero. This is where you stop. You take your time. Use your judgment as best you can. Opening, closing. See, when I'm open, it's freer to go higher up the head. Okay, here we go. That's the left side. Here's the right side. And the bulk's been removed with the clipper over comb. We're all the way open and just floating into that parietal ridge. I like to refer to the cutting head as a foot. The teeth are the toes. The center is the sole and the back is the heel. So right now we're taking the sole of the cutting head and just lightly scooting and floating very handcrafted up into that clipper work. And then as you get braver and as you get a little more experienced and skilled, you know when to float and when to push in. There we go, removing that bulk, really getting that corner work. He's got a growth pattern that spirals back there and he's also got some concave and convex areas uh, that you just try to work with as best you can um, and make it look nice and clean and natural. Once again, perfection isn't what we're going for, but graceful, and easy on the eyes, most definitely. Okay, there we go, continuing to work. Bulk's been removed, now we're really comfortable in that marrying of the two sections, the upper, upper clipper over comb work, and now the middle, middle adjustable clipper work down to that true zero. The true zero is that dark line, and that is basically representing the middle, middle section he likes a nice and high and high, way pushed up there one. So that makes you got to really keep everything nice and high up there. Don't let it drift down. That's why that keeping that stuff there below is really valuable because it shows placement and you're able to take quick measurements and bounce back and forth. Okay, so here we're in the buffing mode of the right side. We've already kind of connected the back there. See, I can kind of look back and make sure that it's a nice and level on both sides with quick readings of my eye. There we go, we're open back up. So you kind of bounce, you open up, 
close down a third, move down a third on the head, move down another third, you get the idea. Open back up and do it again until your eye and your gut tell you it's time to move on. There we go. Uh, clearing the debris. This is a resetting session. Combing out the debris. There we go. Moving pretty quick. These haircuts are time consuming. This is my last haircut of the day on a midweek, so I'm kind of taking my time. Normally my haircuts are about 30 minutes long, but this one really tests you well. There we go. Some nice clean buff work, making sure that it's nice and easy on the eyes. And you have that true zero. That true zero, as I've mentioned before, is the goal here on these haircuts. Um, the true zero is the transition into the razor work. And that's what we're going for here. So scratching down, don't work up with that trimmer. All the above work is done down to the adjustable clipper closed, which is about a triple lot. This is going to take us from the triple lot down to close stubble as possible, basically nothing. And then the razor comes in and scratches down just below that, creating a graceful transition or taper, if you like. Some people call it fade. Some people call it taper. Some people say that a longer hair is a taper and a shorter hair is a fade. I would agree and disagree. I think it's all a taper. Myself, a taper is just a gradual tapering from large to small, whether it's micro, micro, small lengths or long lengths, it's all a taper. Scratching down, now I'm really defining that black line underneath, really making sure that it's got a nice graceful arc to it over the ears and just a little bit of an arc around the parietal ridge. It's not a straight line. Some people want a like a straight line, but this is purposefully a bit of a curve. Not as drastic as the curves that we've done in the previous videos. And I know I've shown this a couple of times, but for one, uh, it's a very popular haircut. Uh, for two, uh, this really showcases the flat top side. You guys get the idea of how to achieve that zero. This is a high zero. There's a high zero, a mid zero, and a low zero, and everything in between. This is a really high zero, nice and high taper. Clipper over comb work. We're gonna get into the flat top here in a second. But my videos are step by step. I show you everything on the head. Um, that's why these videos are so long. So I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you sticking through. There we go. So the tape work to the zero is done. I'm moving on. Everything below that is gonna be razored, so I'm not concerned about that. I'm resetting the head again, heating it up, getting that hair working. That grooming spray is uh, your friend when it comes to flat topping. And when it comes to any kind of control, I like to tell everybody that these men's haircuts are all about control. Subtle little differences make big effects on the ultimate outcome. So here I'm refining. The first pass is maintaining a nice even angle all the way around the head. The second pass is, see I'm getting a better eye on it. Second pass is really closed off. I'm super closed on that wall five star to get the most out of it. As you can tell, I'm wearing a, a GoPro on my chest. I bought a, a chest mount to put the camera right in the center of the action. I've thought um, for a long time on what would be the best way to give a bird's eye view. So this is the barber's eye view. <laughs> here we go. I'm setting up for the uh, flat top. Okay, here we go. So it's from the back, nice and level, nice and straight. I kind of get real comfortable with my comb. Take a little bit of a deep breath and then just straight up dig in and just hold that angle. It's all about maintaining an angle. It's all about transitioning one area into the next. They are all connected. So right here, 
I am a little bit more focused on the right hand side than I am the left hand side because we'll come back and address the outer edges of the sides individually. Right now, we are just creating that initial shape and removing that bulk and trying to be as level and consistent as possible. Not really worried too much about being perfect right now. Uh, that will come later. We're going to take a couple of individual passes and now we'll just address that outer edge. So the teeth of the comb scoop down and up, standing the hair up and a quick swipe. So strike with the comb, down with the teeth and up, and then swipe with the clipper. There we go. See, it's a little low and then high. There you go. Dig down and then stand it up. Dig down and then stand it up. Just kind of create that angle. And now I'm, I'm really only worried about the back edges. We're going to get a front profile here to take care of the front edges. And this is really steady as she goes, slow as she goes. Um, these flat tops, you'll get better at them, and some people can really whip them out in, in, in you know, 15, 20 minutes. Um, I'm not too concerned about the clock on these. I get into it. This is art, and uh, it's really fun, really challenging. And when you can deliver these haircuts, they're not that hard, to be quite honest with you. Uh, they're very classic, very traditional. They've been around forever. Um, I think they're actually coming back in to be coming more and more popular. Um, they're straightforward. I mean, they're straightforward. A couple of little quick questions about what they're looking for and run with it. Create that outer angle. Refine it. You know, he could do a, a high one. You wouldn't have to go to the zero on the sides. He could do a high half or whatever. Not everybody does that beginning work to get that razor. But if you can get a razor tapered flat top, you're going to have a nice and tidy client base. So bunches of passes, bunches of angles. Now I'm really starting to refine everything. Dig down, stand up and swipe. Strike with the comb, down with the teeth, stand the hair up and swipe. It's very fluid, very rhythmic. There we go. Okay, so that's the back edge and that's really honestly just the first pass. We're gonna continue to refine this as we go. Uh, that's the process. That's the way it's done. I like to reset my canvas, reset my eyes, reset my palette, take another deep breath and uh, another quick new approach. All of these stages, it's totally okay to take a intermission and plan your next stage and attack. Here we go. Very, uh, that, that's the key. Turn the head and tilt the head to where you can line your eyes up right on the top of that flat top. Okay, and then super steady foundation. Arms are out, nice and knees bent. There we go. And honestly, it's just carving away, whittling away, carving away. Lots of combing. Little bits at a time. You, you, you basically are taking off less and less haircut, or less and less hair each time. So some of the times you hardly take even anything off. It's more or less just siding it and letting the haircut tell you when it's done. Okay, that looks great. This is not super duper tight, um, but he likes it this way. Nice clean razor taper. We're gonna address the front and the other side now as well. Lots of different approaches, lots of angles. I'm dipping down, I'm really letting my eyes glide off the top just to make sure that everything jives all the way around. Here we go. Just nice and steady. Nice and steady. When you're siding it across the top of the head, make sure that you can see both edges. If one edge you can't see, stand up until you can and then decide if that's level or not. So it's really a lot of judgment, a lot of hand-eye coordination, and it's a lot of fun. and It's very, very challenging. So this front we're going to deal with right at the end. You can't see it there, it's a little bit out of frame. I'm not a cameraman, I'm not a videographer. This is the first time I've ever done this. I'm learning the programs on my own. I'm doing everything on my own. Not that I want to be patted on the back, but I'm really trying to preserve these haircuts for my own use. For later on down the line, 20 years from now, I can look back and see myself cutting away in my prime. And also, uh, I like to share, I like to learn, I feel like you get what you give, so give everything you got, 
And uh, that's all I'm doing. Nice and simple. These haircuts have been happening for a long, long time. I love being a part of the lineage. I love being a link in the chain. I didn't invent any of this, but I did perfect it to my standards. So, nice, just floating, just floating right there off the top. The hair is really crisp, I gotta say. Uh, I don't touch on that Layrite grooming spray too much, but it is the winner. Uh, the Layrite grooming spray is key. Um, it is really helping me uh, keep the hair fluffed, keep the hair unified, keep the hair crisp for cutting. I'm not pushing any hair. That hair is being cut. That, that wall, five star, it cuts super crisp. You have complete freedom because there is no cord. We used to do these with the cord. So um, now it's like a piece of cake. It's a lot of fun. It's very challenging, um, but uh, the tools have really upped the game and given us artists lots of freedom to really challenge ourselves, push our limits, and just develop. Watch the haircut develop. That's the fun part. He came in pretty shaggy, you know, six weeks grown out maybe. And uh, you come in with confidence. There was a long time where I really dreaded coming into work uh, because my skill set was very low. Um, but um, I did not let it stop me from pursuing a great haircut. And then eventually that same guy comes in and one day I said, you know what? I got him today. And then the tide just turns. So see it through these difficult times. Do your best. I think that uh, the effort that you give will be recognized by your patron and he will grow with you. So it's worked for me. It's a proven recipe. Lots of detail work here, obviously. We are just nicking away at it. What happens is, is that front part, when you put a little bit of product in, that front part really stands up and then it creates this kind of a crown right around the edge. I'm just trying to minimize that as much as possible. I'm really being super crisp on my lines. So those little tiny hairs, uh, when he looks in the mirror, he's gonna see those things silhouetted if they're there on the top of the head. These flat tops take hardly any product. They stand up nice and easy, especially on him. So more of the same. You get the idea. It, it takes time. Like I said, I didn't cut any of the actual cutting out of this video. I don't like doing that. Uh, it's a real haircut. Like I do a lot of haircut classes and you sit in the class and you watch the haircut from beginning to end. So I feel like this video should be as close to that as possible. You know, you don't need to see me grabbing tools and cleaning tools. You get the idea. I've done that in the previous videos, and already this one takes a long time. But I'm in another cleaning mode. I'm in another resetting mode. I, the, the flat top's done. The flat top's done. The taper's done. The zero edge is there. Uh, we're cleaning him off. We're preparing him for the razor work. So pulling out that debris, a last check before you move on. Because when I move on, I don't like to come back to it. I really take my time and know uh, these stages and how the evolution of the haircut. So you've done it so many times that there is a real routine, a real step-by-step -step process. Now granted, I do juggle here and there. That's part of the show. But the majority of it is step by step. Now here I'm just detailing a little too much, but I can't actually see what I'm cutting because I'm narrating this after the fact. When I ask my, my clients if I can, if I allow them to film my hands, the first thing I do is just delete the audio track because we're having conversations right now. We're talking in the shop. It's a regular haircut during working hours. Um, but I got permission 
These are my longtime friends, my longtime clients. I'm coming back days later and narrating over the edited footage. The shave, I'm going to kind of show you everything. I'm not going to cut too much out. Um, I like doing that because it shows real time what it takes to razor off this guy's head. There's a lot of real estate up there. And like I said, sometimes I like to bring that dark hair that he has down to like maybe a one and then razor it off. But I've kind of gone through that process and I don't need it anymore. I've watched enough other people shave and I've learned that you really load him up with shave cream. That's my last steam towel of the day, last haircut of the day like we talked about. So uh, key here is take your time, let that heat do its job, soften everything, soften the skin. Like I've said before, there's nowhere else you can go to get a steam towel on your head or neck. Some people put the steam towel on the face. I don't. I don't prefer it when I go get a haircut and I don't do it to my clients. It's just my personal preference. Other people might justify it. I don't see a need for it. Um, it was done to me a couple of times. It just seemed awkward to wipe the front of the face. There we go. Lots of lather right into it. I've got my latherizer one hand action. That's Scout Master. I've got Pro Rosso uh, cream shave from the tube in there. I pre mix it with the brush in a cup and pour it in, keep it nice and fresh. And I really load him up. He's got a lot of hair to cut. So this is uh, the key nice and saturated and lots of shave cream. That shave cream keeps the hair together and helps you manage it. You know, I watch Farzad the Happy Barber um, religiously. Um, he is a great source of inspiration. Ivan Zoot is another dude. I like that hair block that he has created. I like the tools. I like the process. I like to share. And here we are, cutting away. Lots of lather. Take your time. Get that application going. You can see I've draped his shoulder with a towel and a paper towel. That's where I wipe the hair and then I throw the paper towel away, leaving my linen nice and clean. So I've really loaded him up, taking the time. There we go. It's all in there, all the way down to the scalp. There we go. We might even add a little more as we go. But you are a little bit against the clock here. Not that you need to rush, but you do need to be swift with no delay. There we go. Dry those hands off. That's most important. And right into my sanitary implements, always. I pull from there, and then I'll dirty all day, and then I'll clean and put them back in there when they're dry. There's that injectable, Artist DX, Feather, Professional. Tap it in and then check the reveal. That's what I'm doing right there, really looking at the reveal and I see that it's not quite seated. So I just double check that reveal. The reveal is how far the razor sticks out from the actual housing. And here we go, there we go. Keep that thumb starting up there nice and high. He likes to take it nice and, sh and short around there. He doesn't like it poking out too much. It's a personal preference of his that he's made me aware. So we go nice and high up in there. Just on the outside. And then we're going to pick up right at the top of that back line. And because we did really great trimmer work down to zero, this razor work, all you have to do is concern yourself with the removal of the bulk with nice, easy strokes. The Artist DX is a super quality razor. Easy to get. Very traditional. The weight and the balance means you don't have to hardly you, you don't have to hardly do anything. Let the razor do all the work. I watch you know Mr. Official and I watch all these other guys, uh, and they use different products and stuff, but they really um, swiftly can n cut with the razor um, amazingly, and you have to see it uh, to understand that it can be done. Because before I saw it. You know, I was really clumsy and really uncertain. And then you see these pros out there. It's good to model yourself after these guys who are 
way elevated in the game, very passionate, lots of different styles and techniques that you can incorporate. One of the things I've always said that I love about barbering is you're encouraged to look and learn, create your own bag of tricks, and constantly refine your system. So real smoothly getting through this hair, I'm really almost thinking about fast forwarding this part because you just sit here and listen to me talk through it, but you get an idea, you can fast forward through it if you want. We're just gonna raise her all the way around. I'm gonna do that real Okay, great, that's a little bit better, 300%. Like I said, I'm just learning how to do this. I was a graphic artist before I was a barber. So those skills come into play. Uh, you learn how to work these software programs. Just like anything else, it all comes down to a willingness to sit behind the chair, a willingness to sit in front of a computer, <laughs> a willingness to perfect and hone your art. There we go, nice. His hair is really coarse, really thick, but he shaves really nice, looks really good, lasts him a long time. These haircuts will always be somewhat of the mix in trends and styles. And we're just shaving away. It's pretty satisfying and fun to watch the haircut developed. I mean, it doesn't get any higher and tighter than that. And it's funny, it doesn't look as high and tight until you remove all that hair. Um, boom, 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 just like that. Just like that in a wiffle ball bat. Two tears in a bucket. Cranking right along. Let me thank you guys once again. Anybody that's stuck all the way through the video this far, thank you very much. I appreciate your subscribership. I appreciate your attention. I hope there's something you can take from these because I hope to learn something from you. I see some of these videos out there and I like, I'm going to jump in the mix. Spend a lot of hours in the barbershop thinking about this. And then you just have to pull the trigger. Go for it. It's lots of fun. There we go. Nice and clean. Nice, high and tight. All the way up. Flat top. Razor taper whatever you want to call it. The nomenclature doesn't matter that much. Okay, here we go. Nice and clean. Some talc, some aftershave. Clear that cream. You're looking, you're using your eyes to keep on the transition. How does it look to you? Here we go. Nice and easy. Some good old bay rum. I think that's the gables in there by the gallon. Okay, there you go. That's good for him. He loves that crisp, fresh feeling. Some cool air. Little skip to Malou. Grab some talc. I always use my linen for talc. I don't ever put talc on my neck duster. Uh, because if you carry talc from one client to the next, it is unsanitary. So I use a towel, and then the towel goes right into the soil linen. Fresh towels for all the services. Sometimes on these shaves, I'll use six, seven, eight towels. I think you should never skimp on towels. I think it's way better than putting a, a paper towel, tucking it in someone's neck collar. Some, someone did that to me once. 
and it just was crumbly and pokey and um, you know a towel along the skin is much much better and then a paper towel over the towel so here I got that nice Bay Bayless single cutting head foil shaver this thing is pretty cool they sent this thing to me um, unannounced I think that they sent it to me because I used their clipper in my last haircut tutorial and it's ran on double A batteries two double A batteries go in there it is so strong and there is a big difference between I've used the wall foil shaver before and I've used the Andes foil shaver before both of them are very good but they have a tendency to if you move too fast it, it can rasp and this thing is strong and um, very sturdy and it pushes through the hair um, with no tugging no pulling no rasping at all I notice on the other ones you, you should go nice and slow they're good but this one is really something different nice and clean there we go clean up around those ears I like to do this because it does get it baby smooth with that razor you will still get some stubble I mean obviously against the grain you'll fill it but uh, this removes that this removes any of that against the grain and I'll kind of really lightly just float up and around um, I get kind of comfortable tapering it down to that super baby smooth you know what happens is that these guys walk out of the shop and they put their hand right on the back of their neck and when you feel a little bit of stubble it feels great but when you feel it super baby smooth like that okay a little bit of that original water-based pomade doesn't take much it just stands everything up gets everything looking nice and a good profile shot right there good front shot right there nice angle everything flows emphasis to the front of the head really that's easy there I got my Mitsutani comb they got me styled out with shears which have made a huge difference in my hair cutting there they are there those are the smaller ones for detail work kind of a bad angle but you get the idea I'm really working that crown edge my eyes are level with what I'm cutting the camera is obviously below my chin so it's a lower view um, so you know cool thing to do um, if you want to see one of these haircuts live we're out there man we're cutting hair uh, Lay Wright's been very good to me uh, for a long time I've been with Lay Wright since 2004 as a client um, Donnie Holly was my original barber uh, for four or five years before I expressed an interest to transition into barbering and uh, he took me seriously he gave me a shot told me what to do gave me lots of mentorship and guidance so I took it and I applied it uh, lay right uh, the product line is proven it's authentic it's way ahead of everyone else it's been in research and development since 1999 the performance is really what I base all of my opinion on the product line is comprehensive it is thorough it's simple it's fun all of the work has been done so you get to enjoy the benefits um, everyone I think aspires to achieve that level so barbering has been good to me and I'm just trying to be good back there we go sizing him up a little bit last minute shifts here and there last minute touch-ups he's ready to go he's been in the chair for a long time he's proud he's got a great new cut I really appreciate all of the views and people taking the time to walk through these haircuts you can do them as you see they're not that hard it takes some assertiveness and it takes some drive but we all have that so 
Thank you, thank you, thank you for sitting through my videos. I appreciate it very much. More to come. I'm going to do some longer stuff. We're going to do some nice and neat and clean at the ear stuff, all clipper over comb. I think we've covered the uh, razor tapers and the high tapers. We're going to do some regular men's haircuts here on the next video. Thanks, dudes. Everyone, appreciate it. Rock on, brothers. Keep cutting. Rocking and rolling all day strolling.